There are so many interesting ways that we could reach out beyond our echo chamber within the Cardano ecosystem. And these two teams are working on some really cool and interesting different ideas. This is Cardano Caravan and Z Ada. They're both taking the car approach, the vehicle approach. One's doing a, a road tours and the other's doing car shows to try and reach an external group of users that are outside of the Cardano ecosystem. I do like this approach because you find that uh, all these Cardano events are centered around people in the ecosystem as it is, and not many people externally from the Cardano ecosystem join these events, such as people from Ethereum, Solana, or wherever else it might be. So it's a, it's a good way to approach a different audience and try and get those people in and uh, understanding what the technology has to offer. Okay, let's get into this interview. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate. I have the guys from Cardano Caravan and also Z Ada. We have Drew, Flawed, and Andrew and Fabrizio joining me to talk about their car projects. A little bit interesting. I love what these guys are doing and what they're doing for the community as well. So we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper, but let's start off with Cardano Caravan and find out a little bit more about it. So who wants to start off with this one? Who wants to give the little overview of the project? Yeah, I'll start us off. So the Cardano Caravan is a project that was kind of the brainchild of Flawed and then a few other members of the community who were looking for a way to go to CNFTCon and Rare Bloom and bring as many Cardano community members, influencers, projects along with us at an affordable price. So the way we've done it is we have this big RV that you can see parked behind us. We have all sorts of awesome Cardano projects um, plastered over the side with vinyls and we've driven from Indiana through Denver to Las Vegas and now back here uh, to Denver and Rare Bloom representing those projects the whole way, engaging in onboarding and just really like being a positive force for Cardano and uh, getting the community involved. I mean we were really blown away by the support that we received from our sponsors but also from community members through donations through the sale of our token we have an adventure token where people get like a they get our official theme song they get a, an augmented reality rv asset so we've been having a lot of fun placing the rv asset all around the country in funny spots you know on top of the hoover dam and stuff like that um, and so the token um, is really just a community project where they get ongoing utility it's something we're updating over time and that's really like uh, the core of the project and how it all started and if you guys want to throw in some stuff I'm sure you got plenty to add on as well the intention is really to think outside of the box and find new interesting ways to bring to, to, to bring web3 technology and just this this new this new information to to different kinds of people we spent so much time trading ADA back and forth between ourselves and we want to just bring bring new eyes onto the project in new and creative ways try and inspire new people to do different things absolutely amazing it was quite a journey for you guys over across the country now what about z ada what what's the goal and mission behind that one it's an awesome car that you've got vinyled up there uh, how was the process and uh, what, what are you trying to do so the zeta is an interesting project because it's a long-term project it's not just a temporary project we're looking at putting the car eventually into the SEMA show of next year and uh, most people are wondering what the SEMA show is that is the most popular and most famous car show in the world it will be actually at the Vegas Convention Center and the long-term vision is if Zeta, for example, gets uh, somewhere on the stages and wins uh, an award or maybe the best blockchain car or the best truck or what, whatever the case is, that will bring different types of exposure as in magazines, TV shows, uh, movies, TV commercials. Uh, maybe one of those could eventually lead somebody like Vin Diesel, hopefully, or The Rock to say, hey, listen, can we actually get that truck into Fast and Furious 10? Now, just from that aspect alone, we have major exposure and we are able to bring in outside community. But I feel at this point we are an echo chamber and we need to step, or I should say in my case, I need to roll out of the echo chamber and tap into the people that are outside. So what's the, better, the best way of doing it? They love traveling, I love traveling, that's why we're traveling. Uh, I love vehicles, so it is a it is a marketing bridge. Zeta is a basically wrapped up in a bunch of different uh, quotes and projects and different words within the Cardano ecosystem. And as we go to car meets, wherever I would attend with the car, it engages the community to interact with it and 
question what is that word what is a did what is a self-sovereign identity and as people build that curiosity they will end up going home when they have nothing to do they're like oh well let me look into this thing that I saw earlier that really confused me and that slowly starts creating a passion within people when they are able to find something on their own and you just you're not pushing somebody and shoving them and oh hey Cardano is gonna change the world help us do that because most people are afraid of that we are just simply guiding them in that direction and they can take whatever decision they want from there I love how you said confuse me. It, it does confuse many of people. I've tried to explain to many taxi drivers here at uh, CNFTCon and Rare Bloom what it's all about. But you also said something really interesting in terms of engaging external parties and how uh, much of an echo chamber we are. You notice here at Rare Bloom, for example, it's just people in the community. It's no one really externally coming in and exploring what Cardano has to offer. So that's that's quite an interesting thing. The same with uh, pretty much the same as CNFT. Econ as well. So I love this approach going to CMOS and reaching out to a totally brand new audience and trying to uh, attract them that way. I know you have some other ideas as well around the, the camping side of things too. Yeah, so there's many things that we could, and we could, you know, take a lot of your YouTube time when it comes to this, but one of the interesting things that I want to pursue with this is uh, being able to get a, a license from Chevy that will now allow us to put the vehicle into a metaverse, right? Because that is one of the things I want to do. I want to be able to go to, for example, Virtua and say, hey, this vehicle, I want it on my land plot. Can we make this happen? They have confirmed, yes, not a problem, but we need a lesson from Chevy. If we go that angle as a community and we reach out to Chevy, we say, hey, Chevy, this is what we want to do. We might get the license, which is very highly possible, but then we also might have Chevy say, can you teach us more? Yeah. 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 Can you drop us an NFT project? Can, Can you? Right. And this is where Cardano now comes in and not, not takes over a big industry, but I feel like there's a lot of Chevy users out there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And big fans too. Yeah. Yeah. But especially around the world, like, you know, Chevy's are kind of... Uh, brand and you know they, they're rebranded with different types of uh, um, right. uh, models around the world as well so in Australia we have them too big fans so yeah definitely definitely good approach yes and I also see this as a good angle of showcasing to the people who look at our ecosystem and say oh well why do I need an NFT just for a profile picture that's how they look at it right uh, and I feel like we us right here we need to send that message that way it's more than that and where it's more than that is by simply just saying hey you have a you have a car title I'm afraid honestly when it comes to my car title I'm afraid I'm like well, I need to keep this as safe as my like my, my, my passport uh, right this is where it comes into where can I just have a car title as an NFT and just simply say this is my vehicle this is my nft this is the way to prove that this is my vehicle without oh somebody t takes my title puts their name on it and says this is now my vehicle yeah so yeah the securities of nfts could be used in simple in simple ways just vehicles and, and real estate and anything else like that and using our passion to showcase that yeah i, I definitely can make a, a big impact that way now, I know you guys are doing this journey. You've, you've gone through all those different states. Now you're at the end of this journey at Rare Bloom as well. But what next? Like you've got this awesome caravan. It's plastered in all these logos and branding and whatnot. You raised funds to get here really, really cheaply as well right. because of all those sponsors. But what's next? Like how are you going to keep well, this mission going? This time was proof of concept, so we rented. So what's next is to go to Project Catalyst with a solid proposal and a good idea behind it, which we're working on already between Fabrizio and myself and some others in the community, uh, not just to get spotlights on what we're trying to do and opportunities for that, but others that are doing similar things such as Bone Pool and, and so on that are also out there trying to market Cardano. But uh, what next is, I'm just not going to give up. If I don't find source, you know, funding there, I'll find it somewhere else in the ecosystem. Uh, but I really, I'm confident that if we go prepared enough and with the right people involved and the right backing that we can push something through that's going to kind of open 
open up the gates for ambassadors, if you will, for this space. People who are willing to get out here and do what this man's doing, willing to get out here and do what we're doing. We're not getting paid to do this stuff. We're doing it because we love it. He's yeah. doing it because he loves it. Yeah. And we all see the potential in this ecosystem. We're also coincidentally filming a documentary of all of this as well that we'll later on release probably for free to the public because we're not trying to profit from this. We're trying to open eyes and onboard people. And if they can see that not only is this a cool technology that affords tons of opportunities, but they can have friend, you know, fun with their friends and travel, make business connections, marketing, and all these different things all at once in an interesting and creative way. It's what we're here for. Inspire the others to do the same thing that we're trying to do, and they're going to take it their own direction, and that's the beauty of it, is we should. We should be going all directions. Amazing. So how, how much funding do you think you guys need for this uh, Callus proposal to make it happen? Is mean, it? The, R, the RV is going to be the priciest part of it. And, you yeah. know, to get something decent that could actually facilitate six or eight people traveling long distance like that, that's probably close to $100,000. Yeah. Um, but... I'm, I'm willing to go with a 1972 Winnebago. <laughs> We're pretty you know, scrappy guys. I, you know, we'll, we'll make it happen. Um, yeah. Realistically, we won't be able to say the numbers till we get back. That's part of all of this is now we can compile all of this data. And also, we're making it completely auditable because we're putting it on the token. And I'll deliver that to Catalyst and say, here you go. Auditability and the experience all on a token. 25 ADA, please. <laughs> interesting, interesting. All right. So this is, this is a really good approach. I love how we are potentially reaching out to all these different communities and getting out there and uh, potentially reaching new markets, explaining it to people one person at a time. It's such a long and slow process uh, to do this, though. Is there any way that we can speed this up and get this mass adoption into, into blockchain and exposure to Cardano? I think one thing that comes to mind right away is, and we've been talking about it a lot, on this trip is really pulling in the community now. We need their help. If you guys check out the Caravan Twitter, if you check out Fabrizio's Twitter and really just see what we're doing because we want them to get involved. We need them at every gas station just like we are onboarding, you know, grandma who hasn't heard of Cardano yet, you know, and every man, woman, and child in this country, you know. So I really would ask the community to check us out, check out everything that's going on with this really organic approach and, and join us and help us. And there there's all sorts of opportunities. So. Yeah. yeah, everyone talks about mass adoption, but mass adoption is not going to come without those of us that are entrenched now. We're the experts. We're the ones that are responsible for getting the word out there, getting people educated, and understanding what, what all this possibility is that, that fuels our, 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 our energy to, to be so passionate about this. You know, We know that this isn't going to fail, so it's on us to get out there and, and teach the rest of the world. And then you know, mass adoption is our responsibility. It's not just going to happen. We need to make it happen. Just want to add the last point of here is is point out the elephant in the room, and that's basically to say that there will be watchers, there will be viewers who will look at us and say, "Well, hold on a second. Uh, I love what you're doing. Cause I've received a lot of these messages. Oh, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing, but." But, but, and the but comes into, oh, but your carbon footprint and you're driving this and we are Cardano and we are green and yes, of course. Uh, but unfortunately, those people are flying to come here. Um, and the only difference between them and, and us is that I can prove the fact through the blockchain technology, through my wallet, through NFTs, that I am offsetting my carbon emissions through a to a carbon credit project that is verified on the Cardano blockchain. And that don't want to show them, but that's Carbono. That is a Catalyst Fund 8 proposal that got approved, and now they're building towards an industry. And they sponsored me for this trip with three carbon credits. Yeah, you showed me the carbon credit NFT, and it's like it seems so e so easy to do. And that's, that's what it comes down to. We are offsetting our emissions. We are still being Cardano, but it's unfortunate that we do not have electric airplanes or better ways of transportation at this moment. Just pointing out the elephant in the room. Maybe one day we'll have electric airplanes and we can get uh, lower our carbon footprint that way as we travel around the world, but I don't think that's going to come for a long time. Yeah. Guys, yep. Yeah, I was just going to say that's something we, we considered too and we definitely want to do moving forward is offset that carbon footprint because it is 
anti Cardano to be so not energy efficient in the first place. We just had to start somewhere and with the budget we had, but um, we definitely I want to I want to actually talk to that same group and see what we can work out. So, but yeah, this has been great. I appreciate your time, Pete, and the the interview. Really do. Thank you very much. I'd just like to ask, what was the biggest challenge for all of you guys, like getting out here, organizing the cars, organizing yourselves to to make it to the two events, CNFTCon and Rare Bloom? I think we were lucky because uh, as far as like funding and stuff, like I said, we had that great community support. Our sponsors were great. So that part wasn't as big of a headache. What's hard is we've all known each other for months online. None of us had met in person before this event, right? So there's always like a, a growing pains period of just like a bunch of people who don't really know each other getting together. But I, I'm really grateful for the group that we have because we were able to like overcome that pretty easily. Yeah. And like uh, we'll definitely leave as like brothers after this, you know what I mean? So okay. friends for life. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would butt against that and say that no, there really wasn't much of a growing pains period. We meshed <laughs> very quickly. The hardest thing was just time. Like we had the idea, but we didn't really start trucking ahead until around July so we were just really cramped for what we were able to do and everything just kind of came together at the last minute but ev every disaster just kind of fit right into place there's this bizarre synchronicity <laughs> like like it was anything. all just destined to, to, to bring us here to this moment wow De destined to happen you're, you're in that same kind of mindset as well based on our conversation yeah. from earlier yeah we don't want to get back into that but yes yeah, definitely things have worked in very uh, very interesting ways I literally finished the, the car wrap with my friend that owns a car shop um, two hours before we had to leave. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I did an NFT drop two days before we left and I haven't even been able to look back to see what I've sold. I have no clue. Uh, but we did onboard a professional mountain biker standing in the middle of Mesa Verde yesterday yeah. and, and their exact words were, it was destiny that we met right here, right now with you guys that happened to be the ones that could explain this to us. And we stood there and talked for 45 minutes to an hour. That's and, just, uh, that's lost on the trail. It's amazing. Man, yeah. All about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's what we're out here for, man. Fulfilling the mission one person at a time. Word and inspire people. Yeah. Like, if you want to know what Cardano is, and a word to me, Cardano is opportunity. The world doesn't give you opportunity. You have to take it. Cardano will give it to you. It's right here. Just pick it up and do something. We're eager to share it with and you. These are all people doing something with it. Yeah. Absolutely amazing, guys. Thank you for joining me on this episode, explain your journey and explain your projects as well. I, I, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with next, like winner of the CMOS. That would be amazing, getting exposure <laughs> there. Or, or even if you don't win, but you get into Fast Furious 10 and, and The Rock is driving the car, that's, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> if we get that happening and then let you guys journey with the, the, the funding for Catalyst uh, Fun 10, I hope, and then having that uh, car, that caravan where you guys can go out camping and meeting new people out there in the in the world and just explaining what Cardano all means that'd be absolutely amazing thank you guys thank, thank, you, thank, you, thank, you, thank you thank you so much, so much. Awesome. go around circles <laughs> awesome again i'll put all the links down below for you guys so that you can find out a little bit more about what these guys are doing in terms of their projects their progress and everything else around it i do like it because it is different it is trying to reach different people outside of the Cardano ecosystem and i really think there should be an emphasis a little bit more on that to try and uh uh, do the outreach, onboard people, explain to them the technology and how blockchain and cryptocurrencies work in general. All right. Now, today I'm wearing Sunday Swap and Disco Solaris in the background on there on the NFT frame. Absolutely love the projects. Now, if you enjoyed this podcast episode, please consider giving me a thumbs up, click subscribe, click on that notification bell, and you'll see me in the next video. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.